it's time to chill out, get your coffee, and get your slip on. This is the Folding Slip Daily Dose. Oh, that kid went on a fucking hoot of a fucking adventure. George no, Lester. trust me, that drug would fucking make you, like, go further than you've ever gone in a masturbatory rage. <laughs> And then they see this UFO or whatever it is, this diamond-shaped thing. So, and and then three helicopters come whizzing in and everything takes off. I don't know if I buy it, motherfucker. Did Bigfoot come out and tickle somebody's balls? All right, you hooligans. Forty and slip daily dose starts. Hello, people. Welcome to 2014, 15. Jesus, I fucking did it already. 2015. I'll be doing that for a while. Writing the wrong fucking date. Saying the wrong fucking year. Welcome to the new year, ladies and gentlemen. This is the 40 and Slip Daily Dose, episode 26. This is the Let's Smash Some Atoms Together for the New Year episode. News out that CERN is going to be relaunching the Large Hadron Collider on in March. In March? In March? And some day in March. I don't fucking know. In March. It's going to be another, I believe, three-year run. It's been down. Uh, they've been doing some upgrades to it, trying to double the output of the power of the collider. Do some more studies into the Higgs boson, quote-unquote, God particle, as they call it. very interested to see what comes out of CERN for research with the Large Hadron Collider. Uh, I think quantum physics could give us the answers to the why of existence. Maybe I'm wrong. I've been wrong before many, many times. But I'm very interested in what quantum physics, particle physics, these experiments are going to bring to us in the coming years. Uh, it brings me back to our favorite time traveler, Mr. John Teeter. His predictions about CERN. Probably worked for the fucking company. Who knows? But uh, there's a lot of that theory that I like. The multiple world theory. I really like the idea of multiple world theory. I like the idea of time travel between multiple worlds so that there is no changing of the past or the future or whatnot within your own timeline, so to speak, uh, based on your actions. It gets into some really weird philosophical discussions of morality and and uh, a paradox. I I don't really want to go down that road right now. I'm very interested to see what comes out of there. That the, the research that is going to be going into particle physics and what they find by fucking smashing these atoms together and these particles together, I think could very well set the foundations for us understanding reality in a very concrete way. I don't, and I don't you know, wager any guesses to say that, you know, we'll ever completely understand reality. Uh, But these experiments could give us a lot more insight into what it is and what we're experiencing. And I like that. I like that idea. You know, that's one of those down the rabbit hole. Let's fucking, you know, take the fucking red pill, blue pill. Are we in the matrix? Are we not in the matrix? Where the fuck are we? You know, what is reality? 
Because reality is just, it's nothing more than sensory input. I mean, what we perceive as reality is nothing more than what our brain is telling us is here. Or is it? And that's the real question. Matter, everything, is made up of mostly empty space and particles vibrating. So what is it? And I think that's a very good question to ask, and I think it's a good question to have answered. Maybe I'm, again, maybe I'm wrong, but I like, the, I like that we're asking those questions. I like that these things are happening. And I like that the, you know, they're going to try to do it with this fucking Large Hadron Collider. And I know people were fucking worried about, oh, we're going to create a black hole, and they're going to suck the Earth into it. Yeah, shit. If shit happens, shit happens, you know? I mean, people were worried about the atomic bomb, and yeah, it created some weird shit, but people figured it out. Science is what it is, and you can either go with the flow or fight it. Uh, Technology and science is going to go forward. Uh, I hate to break it to people. It's done nothing but go forward. Knowledge compounds on itself. There's exponential growth there. And where it's going to take us, we don't really know. And I don't think we can even comprehend it. But I think it's fascinating. And I'm along for the ride. That's for damn sure. A couple other things I wanted to talk about today. I kind of wanted to jump around a little bit. Uh, A new frog species was found. I believe it's an Indonesian frog. A fanged frog that gives birth to... Uh, live tadpoles not it doesn't give birth to fertilize or doesn't expel fertilized eggs Uh, they do not give birth to froglets they give birth to tadpoles the interesting thing here I guess is that most of these there's only a few species of frogs that do this for one and with the other species of frogs that they've found that can do this they've developed some form of a penis some form of a a delivery device for their semen Um, whereas this frog they can't seem to find it they don't know how they're uh, impregnate you know they're fertilizing the eggs inside the female frog so it's some interesting shit going on there i thought that was a pretty cool story to bring up today and I thought people might want to look into it. Uh, the, the evolution and the development of species, uh, something that I've you know talked about with other people, it, it's pretty radical shit. And we tend to think that evolution goes in this just boom, 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 you know, here. It goes he, from here to here to here, and then it splits here. And it doesn't exactly happen that way. Evolution happens in small, little, tiny ways over time, developing variances between the same species, which then interbreed, bringing all those genes together. And what you get in the end is an amalgamation of all of that shit. It's why we have Neanderthal DNA and other early man DNA. Because those, those different species of early man that were able to breed did. The ones that were close. And you have the same thing happening with like dogs, um, certain cats, etc., etc. If they can breed and there's a reason for them to in situations, they will. And that creates different hybrids. And if those hybrids are viable, they continue on, they pass on those genes. But the genes get re... It gets reintegrated into whatever else is already there eventually. And therein lies your evolution. Is what, what winds up coming out of all of that. What survives? What genetic... Like I said, amalgamation makes it on to the next phase. And I I think these frogs are pretty interesting because they they show that that different 
adaptation for whatever reason they've a- adapted this way um, and they're different from other frogs but I, I I'm fascinated by those those changes those little changes in evolution that will eventually you know somewhere along the line maybe change the course of evolutionary history and we may be watching it and we don't know we could be watching the most fascinating evolutionary change and we would never know because our fucking heads are too far in the clouds looking way too far ahead which I also think is rather fucking interesting we, we often fail to see the forest for the trees we could be standing in the middle of the fucking forest and we just don't get it a lot of times that so many amazing things are right in front of our noses and yet we we long for things that aren't there or things that are coming or things that are long gone when in fact the things that you know we should be looking at are right in front of our faces it's, it just baffles me on so many levels sometimes to think of that but I, but i thought you guys might want to check out the fanged frog that now is you know they found that's giving live birth. Very, I thought that was kind of an interesting creature. So, uh, and lastly on today's docket, and I wanted to talk about this because I actually in '86, I believe it was, I saw Haley's comet, and that is the Lovejoy comet that's going to be coming through uh, next next week, this week into next week. I. I I know on the 7th it's supposed to be the best night for viewing. And they're saying that as the moon rises later in the night, those dark hours that you'll have early in the night will be good for viewing the comet. And that in the northern hemisphere, you'll have a better view of the comet than anybody else. I guess, from what I was reading. That all, you know, like I said, shit I read. So I, I thought I personally would love to see this comment, and I want to see if I can get a chance to um, let my kids see it. I like I said, I got to see Haley's comment, and I thought it was fucking wild getting to see that. I had a telescope back then. I'd gotten a telescope. I think it was I can't remember if it was for my birthday or for Christmas, but I would just sit outside and look at the stars and look at the moon, and that it was. I, I think I got it the year before that comment came through. And, but that comet came through, and that uh, I, I remember it in the sky. Uh, I'll never forget seeing that. It was pretty cool. So I thought everybody might like to try and check that out this week as well, or this coming week. Um, and it's supposed to be this green, fucking, like, emerald green comet in the sky. Uh, we're off to see the fucking comet wizard. <laughs> This has been episode 26 of the 40 and Slip Daily Dose. If you like this shit, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment. Give me some ideas for fucking shows, people. I want to hear them. And Jim, you seriously want to hear a fucking show on the origins of the Volkswagen and spam? I mean, I'll fucking do that show just for whatever factor, but really? You solitaire playing motherfucker? <laughs>